me because I've redeemed you. Yeah. Are y'all hearing this? You're already guilty. All you got to do now is just return to him. Because he's already redeemed you. He already wants you back. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. So because of that, we can do what? Sing, O ye heavens, for Yahweh have done it. Shout. Right there, y'all should have been praised. Sing, O heaven, for Yahweh has done it. Yeah. They have said, come, come 
come and let us put them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more remembered. So they want to take your name and take everything about Israel and wipe it out and let it be no more in your name. Come on. We have forgotten the ancient past. That's the issue. We've forgotten the ancient past. We have adopted a mindset and a lifestyle in this discord which confuses us today. Because we're hearing the word, we're hearing all this Torah, we're hearing all this Hebrew understanding, but a lot of it doesn't make sense with our American, Roman, Greek, and Christian mindset. It has a conflict going on in the heart and in the mind. If we want to learn uh, about and obtain our Israelite heritage while we still want to keep our American identity. We want to be Hebrews on one hand, but then we start finding out all what Hebrews are about, they say, oh, I'm going to exercise my American way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the Hebrew shirt that says Hebrew Israelite, but shoot, if they get me upset, Jack, I'm leaving because that's my American way. You want to be Hebrew in some instances, you don't want to all walk all the way in it. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. And that's going to be a struggle and a fight for the majority of you in here. Second Kings, you're going to be just like these nations. What is that? So these nations scared Yahweh and served their raven images. See, you don't want to be like that. But this was a nation that came in. They feared Yahweh, but they still served their raven images. Who else? Both their children. Their children did. And their children's children. Come on. As did their father. So do they unto this day. So the Bible is letting you know without a shadow of a doubt that some of y'all can figure you out, but you'll still do what you want to do. You still gonna have your own way, you're gonna have your cake, and you're gonna eat it too. You ain't gonna totally completely be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what it's gonna require if you really want to walk in this thing with all your heart, mind, and soul. This right here. The Father's not going to do this. He's not going to coexist with all these other religions and all these other sects of faith. The Father's not going to coexist with all of that. You're either going to love Yah with all your heart, mind, and soul and despise everything else, or you're going to cleave to Yah and despise everything else. But you're not going to serve Him and man. He's not going to coexist. Most high will not do this. Coexist. We're going to be four, 24. Why? For the Lord, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. The Most High that we serve, He is a consuming fire. He's a jealous God. Come on. For Yahweh thy God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of Yahweh thy Elohim be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Now this is what Oprah heard, and she said, "What you mean, God is jealous? What is God jealous of me for?" That's the way she took it in her Greek Roman disturbed mind. She took this as God is jealous of us. And it says, for Lord Yahweh Elohim is jealous God among you. Are y'all hearing the difference? Yes. In other words, the Father said, look here, I've redeemed you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to chastise you. I'm going to discipline you because he's invested in us and we in him. And he said, look, I don't want you going out doing all, worshiping all these gods and doing all the stuff that all the other nations do <coughs> because I brought you to myself to serve me and me only. And I'm going to bless you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to do all the things that you want done, but know that I'm the jealous at I'm the jealous. I ain't trying to share you with no other God because none of those gods that you're bowing down to gave you life, gave you strength, woke you up this morning. They ain't no Gods of wood and stone haven't done anything to you. And you don't realize when you're worshiping wood and stone, wooden crosses, I know, stone, when you're worshiping wood and stone, you don't realize that there are spirits attached to those things. And you're really worshiping devils and demons, but you think you're worshiping a cross, you think that's bringing you closer to the Father, and it ain't bringing you closer to the Father at all. If you wear those accursed objects, you become a curse this life. Y'all hear me? Come on. For thou shalt worship no other God. For Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous Elohim. He's a jealous man. Jealous. Come on. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, 
in the seventh month in the first day of the month. Shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and a holy convocation? Now that's what we're here to celebrate. This is what we're celebrating here. What is the memorial of the trumpet? What does it mean? The word memorial means to remember, means to recall, call to mind, to remember, recall, to be brought to remembrance, to be remembered, to be thought about, to be brought to mind. He said, I want you to have a memorial of blowing the trumpet. And we already know what the trumpet is. The trumpet is lifting up your voice. The trumpet is the, the shofar. When we blow the shofar, that's a symbol to of, of, of us blowing hallelujah and, and I'm just saying everything that has what? Breath. Praise God. All right, so memorial means to mention, to, to record, to make memorial, to make remembrance. We call it a holy convocation. Holy convocation is something that is set apart. It's a gathering or it's a rehearsal so that we can rehearse the righteous acts of God. So what we're doing is what we're going to be doing for eternity. Thinking and remembering what the Father has done. And then actually you're going to get to a point where the old and former life won't even be remembered no more. That's right. We're going to have to do everything. Hallelujah. So right now, we got to practice. we got to keep rehearsing it in our minds so that we can keep knowing that there is a forward momentum there. Right? Who is speaking? Yahweh or Moses? What does it say? Yahweh speaking unto Moses saying. So who's speaking? Moses or Yah? See, a lot of people say these are Moses speech. Or these are the feast of the Jews. Why are you trying to be Jewish? See, this says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses. So these are not Moses' speech. These are the most high Yah speech because he's the one doing the talk. Who does Moses have to speak to? Speak unto the children of Israel. So he ain't speaking to the whole world. He's speaking to the children of Israel. And what is he saying to them? In the seventh month, in the first day of the month. Do so you have a Sabbath? In the morning. Sabbath, this Sabbath is a Sabbath of not, not doing any kind of work whatsoever. It's a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing the trumpets, and it is a holy, set apart uh, gathering or assembly. Okay? Come on. You shall do not, you shall do no servile work there. You should not do any work that you're going to be paid for by being a service or a servant. Stop to your job. He said, "Ye shall do no servile work. So you're not working or doing anything that you get paid for. You should do no servile work therein. Come on. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. You shall make an offering, or you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. I think sometimes we forget about the offerings that we're supposed to bring and present to the Most High. So what we are being reminded of." In the past, and what are we looking forward to in the future? Because this is a memorial, and we're, we're practicing something that was a long time ago, but at the same time, we expected something that's going to happen in the future. Or no, no, that has not happened yet. Are y'all hearing that? Yeah. So let's find out what happened in the past. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. Come on. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they. Day, day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Come on. But they were departed from Rephidim, and they were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and their Israel camp, and their Israel camp before the night. Okay, so y'all see where they at, right? They're coming out of Egypt, and they're pitching their tents in the wilderness. Come on. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak. See, the hearing and the speaking. So again, bearing witness to the side. He wanted some, he wanted a group to hear his voice. He wanted everybody to hear his voice. And this is why he wanted them to hear his voice. Come on. And believe thee forever. Because when they heard Yahweh's voice speaking out of the mountain, they was going to believe Moses forever. Because Moses has been talking all this time that the Moses has been speaking to him. How many people hear that all the time? The Lord is speaking to me, Pastor. The Lord spoke to me in a dream. Hey, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The Lord spoke to me over here. The Lord told me to do this. The Lord told me to do that. Told me what clothes to put on. Told me what job to work in. Told me what to eat. Told me to eat that pork sandwich with all that sauce on He told me. How many people heard that before? The Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that. So, he said, and Moses said unto, and Yahweh said unto Moses, Lord, I will come unto thee 
in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak. You know what they're going to bear witness to hear my voice. They're going to hear me speaking and, and they're going to believe you forever. They're like, okay. Yes. Moses went, okay, Moses, we believe you. He, <laughs> even though he did all the miracles and brought them out of Egypt, he said, no, they still ain't convinced yet. Ain't it just like us? Father, that did all this blessing, all this block down he'll see. All this stuff he did, and guess what? You still don't believe. You're still looking for a word from the law. <coughs> right? <coughs> I need a word. Come on. And now so set bound unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourself. Again, take heed to yourself. Work out your own soul salvation. I ain't got time to be looking at you. I ain't got to be time to be worried about what y'all doing. I'm going to work out my own soul salvation. I'm going to work it out with fear and with trembling. Y'all hear that? He says, and God should sit down with the people out about saying, take heed to yourself. You better watch this because if you get too close to this mountain, you ain't paying attention, you're going to die. Come on, take heed to yourself. That ye go not up in the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be fully put to death. Now hear it. If you touch the mountain that he's about to come and speak on and sit on, he said, You're going to be put to death. So you got to pay attention to each for himself. Come on. Spirit shall not in, in hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come up to the mountain. See, when they hear this trumpet, they hear his voice, if they open this mountain, you know, oh, look at the cloud. I want to see God. Don't look at him. I just want to do this. Let me just, let me just do this too. The smoke of it. He said, You do that, you're gonna die. All right? Y'all know how we are. Yes. So the trumpet sounded to inform the people that the Most High was getting ready to come down and speak with man. So that's the first understanding of why we got a trumpet in the first place. So that it can be as a warning or as an alarm to go off to let you know the king is coming. And the day is the 23rd, and we in Revelation chapter 12, we talked about this woman. Who is clothed with the sun? Yeah. Right now, if you go out there, guess what? You won't be able to see what John saw in Revelation chapter twelve. This woman clothed in the sun, with the sun, uh, with the twelve stars and crowns on her head, and the moon at her feet. You won't see that right now. This woman in the heavenlies, the Virgo, has been pregnant with Jupiter ever since April. April all the way to now has been nine months. Jupiter is considered the king planet. And when Jupiter is coming out of this woman today, I don't hear this. Yeah. This is the sign that John the Revelator saw in Revelation chapter 12. And when this king planet comes out, it's representative of the king of kings. It's representative of a nation being born. And a couple of days ago, and I put it on our group text, a couple of days ago, they were talking about the hurricane. And the man said that this hurricane sounds like a woman screaming. Don't, don't there have to be some kind of labor pain before the birth can come? Yeah. This is a couple of days ago. They said that this, this woman is, this weird sound like somebody screaming, like a woman is screaming. So these are all signs and wonders. He said signs will be in the heaven. Now, you cannot see this woman clothed with the 12 stars on her head. But three planets are lined up over here to make it 12. Uh, 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 eight of them are constellations that make up the Lion of Judah. And then you have um, uh, uh, Mars, Mercury, and Venus are all in one line, direct line together. And when you look at it on a program called Skyview, uh, you can clearly see the image of the woman, and you can see the 12 stars, which is the Lion of Judah, on top of her head. Now, we can't see it in America, but they can see it in Israel. Because while it's daytime in America, it's nighttime in Israel. And the priest is already saying, yeah, we see the sign. Because remember, John the Revelator, he would bow to the island of Patmos. Patmos wasn't in the West Hemisphere. It was the Eastern uh, uh, Hemisphere. So right now, the sign they can see clearly in Israel, but we can't see it now because the woman is clothed with the sun. So it lets you know on one side of the world you wouldn't be able to see it because it would be daytime. So a nation is being born today. And that nation is the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. 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 
I wonder is that why we're waking up. I wonder why it's just all of a sudden people are waking up like, oh, come on. I think I'm a Hebrew. I think, I'm a, I, think I need to be returned to the church. All of a sudden. But know that it's only going to be a remnant that's going to actually make it in. So the trump sounds from the the people as the most hours get ready to come down and see. Come on, read. And Moses went down from the mountain to the people, and they sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready against the third day. Come not as you are. Come not as you are. So the people, when the poor folks that came down, they had to be sanctified. Everybody say sanctified. Sanctified. To be condemned. They had to wash their clothes, and they had to be ready. See, when the king is coming, this is what we got to do. We got to be set apart, sanctified, Kodesh. We got to wash our filthy garments. Are y'all here being washed in the blood of the Lamb? That's how we become white as snow. And then we have to be ready. Somebody say, be ready. Be ready. Because you don't know the moment, the day, or the time. So you got to just be ready. All right? Come on. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning. There were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud was coming down, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So they heard and saw the thunder, the lightning, the big cloud on the mountain, the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud, so that the mountain was soft. Yeah. Remember they told us to be soft. See, it was loud. Father, he just turns it up. He likes it loud. <laughs> he wants his praise to be loud and glorious. Now all soft and serene. All right now, he wants it to be, you know, by the Lord. Okay? People were stripping. Come on. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with Yahweh. Hey, that's what I mentioned. Here's Moses, here's all the people. He's busy the people. Point out, y'all. Come on. Don't be scared. Come on. Come on. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come and see. See God. Come on, everybody. Come on out. And they're coming out of the tent. They're looking. They hear all the smoke and the lightning. And they, you know, got the little shepherd sticks. And, ooh, don't do it. No, they trembling, they don't know, you know. This is this what's going on. Moses brought all the people out of the camp to meet the most high. Can you imagine being brought out of your house now? You're about to meet the most high. Huh? He says, and they stood at the left part of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke because Yahweh had descended upon it in power. So they see this mountain literally on fire. And they're like, we don't want to go see if you're close enough. Oh, we don't want to. We'll stand over at the nether part of the mountain. Check this, look at it. Watch that. Hebrews 12 and 29. For I got heard it's a consuming fire. Ah, yeah, it's a consuming fire. See, remember on the day of Pentecost? Guess what's set up on there? Clothing tongues like as fire. Y'all hear it then? Same thing, because our yah is a what? A consuming fire. You can't have it no other way. So the children of Israel, this is them at the Mount Sinai. They're all out there, and they see the mountain and smoke and light and flash, and they sit there just looking at it. Ah, now put yourself in that picture. How would you feel if you was at the mountain of Yah and you saw the mountain of fire? What would you be like, really? <clears throat> ooh, ah, ooh, ah, right Watch this. Come on. The smoke, therefore, ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain, <laughs> mountain quaked greatly. Now the mountain is shaking. Come on. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and west, louder and louder, Moses spake, and Elohim answered him by a voice. Now, all this is happening, and then Moses said, Elohim, Yahweh, and then a voice comes back. They say, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Elohim. Now, what you going to do then? Everybody comes like, oh my God! Wow! We believe you forever! See, because what happens is we get this as a story and we just think that it's just something, you know, it's a fairy tale or something. No, this is what happened. The, all this stuff was going on and then Moses spoke to the Most High and the Father answered him back. And that was nobody, it was not done to nobody like on oh, back out here. And that's why ain't nobody gonna be Moses. I don't care if you name your Hebrew name Moses. You ain't gonna be Moses. Now. Not the real. No, hear that. Right. And he was the meekest man on the planet at that time. 
He spoke to the Father, and the Father answered him in front of everybody, audibly. And everybody heard the Father speak. That's why the Bible says, has there ever been a nation that has heard your voice? Has there ever been a nation like us that has heard the voice of Yah? There ain't been no other nation on the face of this planet that has heard the Father's voice but Israel. No, here it is. Yes. Come on. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with oh. the Okay, my boy. Okay, come on. And Yahweh came down upon the Mount Sinai, on the top of the mount, and Elohim called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. So not only did he speak nice and Moses come up here, <laughs> and all this fire, just walk on up the mount, Moses. And Moses, okay. And everybody's, all y'all looking at me, right? Yes, sir, I'm going up to the mount right now. All y'all looking at me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Y'all know how we are. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't. This is a miracle. Am I asleep? Am I drinking? This is really happening. So the trumpet blast had proceeded before the presence of Yahweh fell on the mountain. What else was the trumpet for? Numbers chapter 10, verse 2. 1 and 2. Come on. And Yahweh sang unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. And the whole people shall thou make them, that thou shalt, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the journeying of camp. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then ye shall blow an alarm with a trumpet, and ye shall be remembered before the Yahweh your Elohim, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. So these are the reasons that the trumpets would be able to gather so far. Trumpets are for the gathering of the people, the journeying of the people. And for the long for war. All right? That's what the trumpets are for. Come on. Notice when the Israelites blew the trumpet as an alarm that Yahweh would remember them and he would save them from their enemies. Come on, Jeremiah, blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet. Come on, Yahweh to remember us and save us from our enemies. Seven times and declare something. 
Moses and Joshua are showing us a pattern, and the trumpets proceed. Yahweh was present. And let us go to the new covenant and see can we see this same example there? And remember, we're bearing witness about this trumpet. Revelation 8, 1 and 2, come on. And I saw the seven angels which stood before Elohim, and to them were given seven trumpets. Come on. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets appeared and filled the town. Come on. Seven angels, seven trumpets, seven different times. This looks exactly like the book of Joshua. Yes. All right? Come on. Why do these angels have trumpets? Come on. Because of vengeance and judgment. That's what the trumpets are going off for, sounding a alarm, because there's going to be some trouble in the land that we're in. Some vengeance, and there's some judgment getting ready to happen. And we're already starting to see that taking place. The first time that Yeshua came as a lamb to be slain, but the second time he's coming as the lion of Judah to yes. reign and to rule. Yes. Now, hear it now. Yes. Why vengeance and judgments? Joel 3 5 and 7, come on. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Come on. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye may, might remove them far from the border. I want y'all to see how the Bible sees you. He said, You've taken my silver and my gold and my goodly uh, treasures and you put it into, into your place. And then the next one talks about Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold it to the Grecians. So he looked at you. And said, man, you are my gold and my silver. You are the, my precious ones. I know I'm hearing that. Because everybody has really a precious to the sight of God. That they might remove them far from their borders. That's what happened to us. Come on. So I will raise them out of the place. This is the place to shout. I will raise them out of the place. Come on. So that ye have sold them. Where you sold them at. Come on. And will return their recompense upon your own. And I'm going to return your recompense. Upon your own head. And this is why the Father has the whole thing in general with judgment and vengeance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to stop there. Well, I can go on and on and on. <laughs> but we understand that the feast of Teruah Teru has to do with our voices, lifting our voices up like a trumpet in our night, sounding an alarm to him. And we want to bless the Holy Father and we want to bless his holy name. Come on, Jeremiah, real quick, get those our flutes and those things out. Uh, real quick, that's what I said. Just to uh, all the children so everybody can have one. And we want to blow the trumpet one more time before uh, we are dismissed. I want everybody to get a trumpet. Open it up, uh, open it up. Pass those out. Pass those out. How many we got? How many we got? <laughs> all right, everybody stand up. We're going to pray. I'm going to get y'all blow the truck. I got that in.